Well, welcome back to Sam's Antique Motors. Sam Wilson here. Today we're working on uh, getting prepared to do a startup on this 454 big block. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, filling it up with some oil. Go figure. And uh, I got about seven quarts of royal purple that I've uh, put in this big block. I put a quart in the filter, nearly a quart, and screwed it on. And then I put the rest all except for one quart in the block. And now I've got a... Uh, uh, drill on a special device to uh, prime the motor with uh, through the uh, distributor slot. So seven quarts of oil put in and now I've got uh, the special attachment on the drill back here in the uh, distributor hole and we're just going to prime it up. You can hear the drill bogged down. That means it's, it's uh, got oil up in it. So it's, it's like I got sort of a dead battery, but uh, you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and prime this a little more and then uh, put the lube the distributor gear and put it back in so we'll be ready to go. Well, that day has finally come to see if we can get this 454 ZZ big block fired off. We've uh, got, uh, I think everybody, everything tidied up. As you see in the prior video, we got the oil pump primed up with the drill motor. Um, We've gone in and programmed the uh, fuel injection, so it has this fancy little monitor. It's a little bit uh, uh, fluky. The touchscreen doesn't work very well, but after a little bit of kind of frustrating uh, multiple entry, we got that all uh, set up and working. Got all the hoses on, we got everything clear of the motor. We've got uh, the timing set, so we put the uh, top dead center and then this uh, HyperSpark distributor's got a uh, little cap that aligns it, so it's a self-timing uh, HyperSpark distributor. So uh, I think we're pretty much ready to give it a get it a kick over and see what happens. So I'm gonna go around and uh, get it fired up. So here we are on the inside. We've got uh, really gonna focus on oil pressure. We got the key on. 60 pounds of fuel pressure, got it in park, got the emergency brake on just for good measure, and uh, here we go. Nice, fired up, we got vacuum, we got uh, good oil pressure, Showing a little bit of charge. Seems to be idling nicely.
Well, it doesn't always quite go like you think, just as in the movies. So here's what really happened. Okay, full disclosure, uh, you watch all those restoration shows and everything just goes like a charm and they get to the end, everybody uh, pops it off immediately and high fives and all smooth, but I doubt that rarely happens. Um, what really happened on this one, as you just saw, is we fired it off, um, immediately the fan blade was making a racket, intercepting the pulleys, so we cut it, shut it down immediately and diagnose the problem. And what we didn't know was that with a big block, the motor rotates in a clockwise direction if you're looking at the motor from the front. When you have full, all the pulleys on it with a standard belt system, they all run the direction of the motor. But when you put a serpentine belt on, the top belt comes underneath the fan pulley, not over the top of it. So what that does is that reverses the direction of the fan. Um, I actually thought about which direction the fan would go on there, and, and it actually says on the fan, this side's towards the engine, so that's the way I did it. So, um, in hindsight, I didn't really realize it was going to reverse the direction, um, and when we fired it, it actually fired, you could hear on about the fourth cylinder, but as soon as that fired and the flex fan caught the wind, it flexed it back enough to intercept those pulleys up on the front and made a bunch of rackets. So, um, we shut it down. We figured out what the problem was pretty quickly, pretty obvious. Uh, I had to pull that fan off. Um, it really takes a reverse direction fan, which is actually hard to find. Um, we had to order that in. Um, once I got the fan in, since it's the fan blades are on the opposite side, then it needed more clearance yet. So I had to get a, a longer spacer to push the fan out closer to the radiator. So I had to order that up. Got all that in. Uh, in order to get that in, it was a major pain in the ass. I had to pull the fan shroud out and reach back in there where you can't see anything, can't feel anything. Um, but we got it all back together. And uh, as you saw earlier in the video, with that problem resolved, it pretty much fired off right away. Um, and uh, with a, this fuel injection is a self-learning system, self-timing. So we'll get it broke in, and then uh, once we get that done, get it warmed up, then we'll go in and do some fine tuning, get it idling right, but it sounds really good. And uh, that's the rest of the oh shit story. Download the Resto Rat app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.